is Damaris Ramos, your host for Latina Role Models. And tonight we have... My name is Ada Aida. They sort of call me Ada, Ada Rosabal. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm very happy to be here with you. It's Thank so you. nice to have you, you know, the mother of Marlene Silva that yes. we will have, you know, shortly, a couple of weeks from now, we'll have Marlene. So, so glad to have you. Tell me a little bit more about you. Tell well, me your story. I, I was trying to think of what were those moments that would define who I am. Well, let's start to say that you are Puerto Rican. No, I'm no? Cuban. Oh, wow, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. What a surprise. So take it from there. Okay. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cuban. I'm Cuban born. I was born in Cuba. And uh, my family left when I was 14 years old with one suitcase for each one of us. Uh, we came into the United States with an unknown future. You know, what would become of us? So I know what it is to be an immigrant, the fear, the uh, prejudice. I remember my family decided to move to New York because my father said that uh, there was no, no work, there was no jobs available for him in, in Miami, so he decided to go to New York. So I remember that they sent me to a public school where they would send all the immigrants, all the Latin children, they sent them to that a high school called the High School of Commerce. But thank God they closed it and tore it down because it was so bad. Well <laughs> Remember the movie, the Stand and Deliver, you know, we all the people, we all, all the ghettos, everybody that were there they were really bad people. I was very naive, you know, I came from a country like Puerto Rico where everybody, you know, like mothers stayed at home and took care of their children. Traditional. Traditional families. So when I when we got to New York, uh, my mother had to work, so I was there all by myself in this terrible and horrible school. And uh, they sent us to this special classroom where I remember that it was November, it was December actually, it was very cold. And the teacher, I will never forget his name, her Mrs. Kane, she opened up the windows and we were very cold because we were having if not me, I mean all those of us that were there, all, they came from different uh, countries. There were uh, girls and boys from uh, Nicaragua, from Puerto Rico, from Caribbean, Cuba, South America. All, all Latin American. And I remember we were all very poor. We were all immigrants and we had not, we didn't have this, the, the uh, good clothing for winter, we didn't the uh, appropriate clothing for winter. So we would say, please close the windows. And she would say, why did you come? If you didn't have the nice clothing, you shouldn't come to this country because this is a cold country. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what? I'm gonna get used to the cold. I'm going to be somebody and I won't let anybody push me around. So I guess that was my, the best school, the best school that I was in. Later on, I changed school. Uh, I remember that. Uh, we so, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Basically, you're telling me that, that challenge that you had in life basically mm. kind of like changed the route of who you are, who you were going to become. That gives you strength. That's right. And strong women, they, they are able to transform. Someone will see it as a weakness, as a challenge. You transform that as a, your passion, right. your courage. It's a positive thing that we are able to transform and say, you know what? Let's move forward. Yes. And that has been ever since my motto in life, you know? When things get bad, when things get very difficult, those are really chances to go, to grow, and empower yourself even more. So I'm not afraid of what happened in my life, because I know that no matter what happens, I will be able to transform it into positive, positive attitudes, positive, uh, uh, lessons, and I will be able to learn from them. So this, yes, those moments in my life really made me who I am today. So when you came from Cuba, Cuba at 14, it was like a probably cultural change, you know, it was a different change, the language was a change. What was the most difficult thing? Did you left some family? What was it that you remember from Cuba well, that I you still probably feel like 
a loss? I would like to say this. Uh, I, I was from that school, I went to a Catholic school. Somehow they got me to a very good school. And this is, this is my message. Like that school was a Sacred Heart of Mary in New York. I was like the only, only two of us were, were Latin. The rest were. So things change again. Right. So I learned that what I was was an asset in that atmosphere because in that uh, uh, environment, I was able to integrate myself into the mainstream community without forgetting who I was. I knew who I was. I knew, I knew that I had a very strong cultural background. I have a very family, I was a family, I still are, family oriented. I believe in values. I believe in helping others. I believe in connecting. I believe in emotions. And that, those values I brought into my new mainstream of friends. So you became unique. And this is my message. I became integrated, I integrated myself into the mainstream with a new um, uh, white American friends without forgetting who I am or who I was. And I, I, I always like to say that this is my message to the immigrants. Don't forget who you are. As immigrants, of course, we have to face lots of challenges, but that will make us stronger. Don't forget who you are. Face what you have to face and do integrate yourself into the mainstream. Learn the language, learn the new culture, Learn the laws of the country. Learn the opportunities, the opportunities you have. Learn what you need to learn and become one of the mainstream culture without forgetting who you are. I remember that I, we left to, to Puerto Rico because my father got very sick. And then we left to Puerto Rico. And when we got to Puerto Rico, I became Puerto Rican. I love Puerto Rico as much as I love Cuba. Puerto Rico is my land, it's my homeland. Is my step homeland, and I really, I really, really love it because it welcomed me when I needed it most. So I learned the lesson again. I became a Puerto Rican without forgetting who I was. I'm a Cuban, I'm American, and now I'm Puerto Rican. I love that country. I married there, met, married a very good man who was also a Cuban who left and uh, went to Puerto Rico. But my whole family is Puerto Rican. I remember my son. My late son, he died when he was 13, 18 years old in a car accident. And I remember once he asked me, Mom, where are you from? I said, Cuba. And where's my, where's dad? He said, Cuba. He said, them and Cuban too. I said, no, you're Puerto Rican. This is your land. This is where you're born. You have to love your country. So Marlene, who you will meet shortly because you were interviewing her, she's the same, you know. She, she likes to say, um, she married Puerto Rican, her family, she's Puerto Rican, her family is Puerto Rican, my grandsons who I love very much, I love Puerto Ricans, but they have Cuban blood and they arrange themselves to be part of this country. They all, all their friends are from here, from Orlando, they, they go out with them, they, we have a, all a, a social life, it's connected to the white Americans and the Cubans and the Puerto Ricans. So we learn that there's no difference. We should not let them uh, embrace us or, or call us or try to put us in a little box or box us in a, in a cultural background because we're really citizens of the world. And this is my message. You are in the land. We are Latin women. We're strong women. Of course we are. We have a history. We have, we have a 500 years old history, Spanish history. Spanish was the main power empire for 500 years. So we have a long tradition of values and culture, uh, and culture that we should not forget. But we are also Americans. So Anna, your education. I want to hear a little bit more about your about your education and what is it that you're doing right now. I became a clinical psychologist. I'm I'm, I'm working primarily with families and couples. Because I believe that families, those are my values. You know, the fam families, what we call it. Families is a, is a, is a very, is a very Spanish, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a culture value, value that is very Spanish. We believe in families. So I work with families. I'm a clinical psychologist and I work with couples, I work with families, I work with children, I work with aged parents. I, 
work with handicapped children. So if someone would like to connect with you, you have offices in Puerto Rico. I and have, you have offices here. So that's right. tell me about that. We have uh, a Centro de Crecimiento Gaviota, a counseling center in San Juan, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. And we also have one here, Gaviota Counseling Center, where my daughter Marlene, you will see her shortly, she became, of course, a marriage and family therapist. And she does a tremendous work there. So uh, I would like to have more, more uh, people to come to our office so I can transmit this idea of, you know, Concentrate on your family, your family values. Yesterday, Malik and I, was so, we saw a young, an adolescent boy, and he was talking to me all the time in English, which I appreciated. I said, of course you have to speak English, but don't forget your native tongue. Because with language, language, languages are not only a way of communicating with each other. Languages bring a whole world of values together with it. And when you have both languages, you have two great values in your life, cultural values. You don't recognize it when you are young, I told him. When you grow older, you'll see what the advantage you have of bringing to everything you do. Two great cultures, Spanish and American. So when someone calls your office, the number is? The number is Gaviota Counseling Center, 321-505-5045 or you can get in our webpage which is Doctora D R A Rosa D R A Rosabal at Centro Gaviota Online Gaviota Counseling. I'm sorry, I'm using Puerto Rico. Gaviota Counseling Service. You can get us in our webpage, Gaviota Counseling Services Online, and you will find everything about. So us. when someone calls for services, what they should be expecting? When you call for service, you should be expecting acceptance, connection, heart to heart. We will connect with you in your needs without trying to force our values into you. We'll accept you as you are. We'll see what you're bringing, where your problems seem to be. And together, please listen well, together we will find answers. We will not force our solutions to you because we believe that in every person, every single person, there are their own answers to their own problems. Let me ask you this, and with this we have to um, give a closure to the interview. For women out there that are looking at you, that they're like proud of in who you are, the person you, the things that you have done, what will be your advice? What will be this, those words that, and you have mentioned many, and you mm -hmm. have given your message, but in you know the last 30 seconds that we have, what is that? Don't give up. No matter what happens to you, don't give up. Things will be bad, so things will be good. That's life. Sometimes we're getting many uh, positive experiences and sometimes very lousy experiences. But no matter what's going on in your life, don't give up. Concentrate on you. You're, you're, you're a magnificent person just because you are. Human beings have this special interior spiritual world that once you get to know them, nothing will defeat you. Keep on your two feet. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything because you're able to do it. Please do it. It has been such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you for coming. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. This has been Damaris Ramos for Latina Role Model. Thank you and good night. <laughs>